Before I get started today, I want to say one thing. I am neither a fan nor a foe of Joe Rogan. Uh, I do enjoy his work, though. I mean, I enjoyed him back when he was on news radio, all the way up through his modern stand-up. I've actually enjoyed his work. Now, I don't really watch his podcasts, though. But today, I got an email from a couple of people. One of them was a Keelan Calderon, I guess his name is. And this video is going to be a little... Uh, unprofessional today because I actually have notes here because I sat down and wrote down all the things that made me angry as I was watching that podcast. Uh, as you can see here, this is how well I actually prepare for a video. Usually I don't even have this. A lot of times people think that when I look over here, I'm actually looking at notes or a prompter or something. No, I'm just trying to gather my thoughts. That's my sink I'm looking at actually right there. Uh, but today I'm actually going to have notes. You're going to see me referring down to these quite a bit today. But like I was saying, uh, I wanted to say that stuff before I get started. But what I want to deal with today is uh, calling out Joe Rogan for a lot of his anti-gun fuddery. And I'm going to go into it a little bit more in depth about what that anti-gun fuddery was. And I want to talk about why I'm so angry. Now, why I'm angry might not be what you initially think is what is what making me angry or say the reason is not what you might uh, initially think and I'll get to that towards the end of this video but first I want to talk about this podcast and for those of you who want to go watch this podcast and check out everything I'm talking about it was the Joe Rogan experience number 1253 and all the real anti-gun fuddery starts at about the hour and a half mark so if you go there you're going to really start uh, probably getting mad if you're like me and you watch this but let's talk about it here now, Joe Rogan, he's someone that I've always assumed was fairly pro-gun. Everyone tells me he's pro-gun. He says he's pro-gun. But I watched this video, and this was a, uh interview with a guy named, uh, I forget how you pronounce his first name. It's like Johan, Johan, uh, and his last name is Grillo. He's an anti-gun activist, basically. Uh, he tries to portray himself as one of these people that's like, oh, you know, I'm all for guns and everything, but I'm going to go out and find the worst examples of every bad thing that's ever happened with guns and the worst example of people and try to portray that as the norm. So he's not one of these, I'm a fair anti-gun guy or I'm just a fair gun guy. No, he's an anti-gun activist who tries to push himself as someone that's pro-gun uh, in theory, I guess what you would say, but he's not. Uh, and all you got to do is listen to him uh, and things he says, like how when I go to gun shows and uh, all these people there are breaking the law and selling all these ARs to, to Hispanic people from Mexico and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and he portrays that like that's the norm and how and the way you deal with these people that are breaking the law is to pass more laws. He kind of overcoats the, the whole notion that what they're doing is already illegal because he'll say like, I see people come up and say, I don't have any ID and I'm from Mexico and I don't want to be traced to these guns. Will you still sell them to me? And they will. So we need to pass more gun laws. Well, that makes no sense. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about Joe Rogan. Uh, in this uh, interview with this Grillo guy, Joe Rogan gets completely owned. Uh and it's not a like you know just like facing him down kind of owning. It is a manipulative type of owning. He gets so manipulated in this video to where I don't know if everything he says anti gun he actually thought through, but he says a lot of anti gun stuff. So let's go through it a little bit here, uh, line by line, of some stuff that really made me angry, and let's talk about it. Uh, for one, he says, "Oh, I go to gun shows sometimes, and boy, those places are just full of people itching to shoot somebody." That's one of the most negative anti-gun stereotypes you can possibly perpetuate. As if ma the vast majority of people shouldn't have a gun because they're just these people just waiting to enact violence. So that right there, that made me angry from the get-go. And he says that pretty much right out of the gate after that hour and 30 minute mark. So that bothered me. So I would hope he would think about what he said there. He even says, he's, I know this one guy carries a gun and a knife and it's just he's just waiting for somebody to fuck with him. I'm like, really? Because if he was really just waiting for somebody to fuck with him, I think he would have come up with a reason by now to shoot or stab somebody. Uh, you said you've known him for years. Uh, if he hasn't shot or stabbed anybody, where do you get this notion that he's just waiting to kill somebody? So that was a bad thing right off the bat, but that's not even the worst of it in my opinion, although that is one of the worst things you can say. Now, he goes on to say he believes in the Second Amendment, that he owns guns. But you know, Joe, there's a big difference between believing in the Second Amendment, as in, yeah, it exists, and exercising it yourself and actually understanding what it's about. Because it's very clear in the rest of this interview, he doesn't understand what the Second Amendment was, is about. Because almost everything he talks about is self-defense, 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 hunting. Self-defense, 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 hunting, maybe a little sport shooting. 
And that's not anything to do with the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is about the right of the people to maintain the tools that they need to maintain their freedom and to keep from being oppressed by an oppressive government. It has nothing to do with self-protection in your home, has nothing to do with hunting, has nothing to do with sport shooting. Those are just conditions that people have thrust upon the Second Amendment to try to weaken it. So you don't understand the Second Amendment. You might believe in it, and you might own guns, but you're clearly not a Second Amendment supporter. You're a supporter of reasonable restrictions. That's what a lot of people like to call it. You're a supporter of a Second Amendment that it is okay to infringe upon as long as those infringements don't influence or hurt certain people. So uh, I want to point that out to you right away. You might believe in it because it exists, but you don't understand it. Uh, then... Uh, he goes on to say things like, it's ridiculous a lot of these things that are out there. That these things clearly aren't for self-defense. And that goes like what I was saying. He doesn't understand what the Second Amendment is about. He talks about all these like ARs and bump stocks and all this other stuff. And he's like, these things aren't for self-defense. Why should anyone have these? He, he pretty much implies no one should have AR-15s because they're weapons of war. Uh, another complete and total misunderstanding. Uh, an AR-15 is not a weapon of war. I don't know a lot of soldiers carrying AR-15s, semi-automatic rifles, into combat. Uh, so, just right there, pure ignorance. Uh, not as much mad at that one as I am the ignorance involved in the statement. Uh, I don't think it's as much anti-gun as it is ignorant. It is anti-gun, but it's based on ignorance. Uh, and like I say, he talks about the bump stocks, etc. You'll see all that in there. So that's really bad. His whole his whole uh, mindset towards any firearm, any weapon is, if it's not something I would use to hunt or sports shoot, then no one needs to have it. And that is horrible from Joe Rogan. I, like I said, I thought this guy was supposed to be pro-gun, pro-Second Amendment. Uh, apparently not. Uh, and, and like I said, I'm going to get more into why I'm really mad about this, what I'm actually mad about here in a few minutes. But another thing I wanted to go on that he said was, there's a couple more things I just want to talk about real quick. Is for one, he pretty much uh, uh, insinuated that he would be okay with a licensing program for people to own guns because he thinks it's ridiculous that you just go in and as long as you don't have a criminal history, you can buy a gun with no formal training, no licensing, nothing. And he's like, it's ridiculous that you can do this. So that whole notion that there has to be a licensing system to exercise the Second Amendment ridiculous. He tries to use that whole argument of, well, cars have to have licenses. You have to have a licensed to operate car. Total ignorant position when it comes to firearms. When you operate a car on a city street, you are operating that car in a dangerous manner because cars are extremely dangerous. And the fact that you're driving it on a city street means you are operating it in the way it is potentially deadly. So people are a little clo more closely screened for that. When you carry a handgun on your hip every day, you're not operating that gun in a way that's potentially deadly. You're not even doing that until you pull the gun and point it at somebody. If you were just having a car in your yard and you weren't actually going to drive it in the street, you don't have to have any licensing for that car. I can drive one around on my property here. No licensing on that car. It's when I take it out and operate it in a dangerous fashion, meaning driving it at high rates of speed on a public street, that's when I have to have a license. So if you want to say people should have to have a license if they're a professional who's out there waving a gun around every day as a police officer, etc., I might agree with that. But as far as everyday citizens having to be licensed to just exercise their Second Amendment, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. To exercise their Second Amendment right, that's ridiculous. There's going to be a lot of goof-ups in this video because, like I said, angry and I'm not editing this. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about, and he totally gets led into this by this Grillo guy, about how if someone commits a hit and run and they run off, you can run that license plate to know who they are immediately. If you find a gun on a, on a murder scene and you run that serial number, you can't just punch it in and know exactly who it is. You have to go research it. Uh, don't you think that's ridiculous? And of course, Joe Rogan falls right into it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. He even says, I think there should be a digital database for all firearms and who owns them. You can watch the video. That's, that's a paraphrasing his own words. Uh, that's a ridiculous notion. For one, what would that help? If you find a gun in a murder scene, being able to identify them in 10 minutes or four hours makes no difference in solving the crime. All that does is make it easier for cops to solve the crime a little bit. Here's a little hint for you. Anything that makes a cop's job easier, 
hurts your freedom. So here's the thing, would make no difference in solving a crime would not do anything to stop any crimes. All it would do is create a database that the government could misuse if they ever decided they wanted to target people who owned firearms. Same thing with universal background checks, which is another thing Joe Rogan said he was okay with. He was okay, he was all on board about people not being able to buy a gun from another individual without a background check. Because, you know, well, that's just common sense, right? No, all that does, it doesn't stop any crime. It doesn't stop any illegal trafficking. I like that. Whole, I hate that whole idea where they keep uh, conflating illegal gun trafficking with uh, legal gun purchases. Not the same thing. That's like saying, well, you know, people who murder people, you know, if we just made it illegal to be rude, well, then no one would murder anybody because being rude would be illegal and murdering people's rude. It's just a stupid argument. People that are already committing the crimes are going to commit the crime. Uh, so that whole, uh, like I said, conflating those two issues just really gets my goat. Uh, so they're doing this, they're conflating all this stuff and saying, oh, well, there just needs to be a universal background check. That doesn't stop crime. It doesn't stop anything. All it does, like I said, is create a database for the government to use against the people. And there's a reason that there's laws existing that specifically prevent that because everyone knows how the government is really good at abusing lists. Uh, look at the uh, no-fly lists from uh, 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 the Patriot Act. People are just put on there as a punishment when they haven't done anything wrong. So the government isn't to be trusted with lists, that's for sure. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of anti-gun buffoonery going on in this video. It just was saddening. Uh, and like I said, neither a fan nor a foe of Joe Rogan, I probably lean more towards fan, but I was really disappointed in everything he said. Just how he came across as real docile and cowed by this anti-gun guy from England and Mexico. Well, he's from England, he lives in Mexico now, I do believe. Uh, but here's why I'm really mad. This is the thing that gets me the maddest. It's because Joe Rogan isn't the problem, he's a symptom of the problem. Guys like him, they hear this bullshit from the NRA and from people who support the NRA knowingly knowing this stuff is bullshit, like Hickok 45, Colian Noir, Dana Lash, you know, all these fucking paid shills. At least Dana Lash has nice titties. Hickok 45 doesn't even have nice titties. Not that I care either one. I'm, you know, who cares about titties when you're talking about gun rights? So many people care about titties and guns. I never understood that. They're like, look at that woman shooting those guns, there's titties. But I'm like, you know, porn's fucking free, right? Act like you've been there. Act like you've touched a titty before. That the sight of one bouncing when someone shoots a gun doesn't make you come in your pants because you've never actually touched a tit. I mean, I've never understood another topic there. We're going off here. Uh, but the NRA puts this shit out there, like how red flag laws aren't dangerous and bump stock bans are a good idea and how we have to compromise or we're going to lose all of our rights. And Joe Rogan even said that. He said, if we don't start compromising on these common sense things, we're going to, it's going to come to a head. We're going to lose our rights. He's been poisoned with that bullshit by the NRA, Colin Noir. And he speaks to these people like Coley and Noir. So they talk directly to him and that's where he gets that fucking poison from. People like you and me, we don't get to talk to Joe Rogan. Everyone knows I would. I'll debate anybody. Uh, I'm not ashamed of my opinions. I'm not afraid to defend my opinions to anybody. I'll either have a nice, calm debate with you, as people have seen in lots of my videos when I have people I disagree with, or I'll fucking yell at you and call you whatever I want to call you if you want to do that type of, of arguing, too. I ain't going to back down from anybody who I disagree with. But people like you and me, we don't get to talk to Joe Rogan. He talks to these people like Colin Noir. People like Hickok 45 can talk to Joe Rogan. So he gets poisoned with these fucking ideas that are coming from supposedly the biggest supporters of gun rights in the country, like the biggest gun channels on YouTube and, uh, you know, the NRA. They're all pro-gun, so if they say it, it's right, right? Wrong. They are some of the biggest anti-gun forces in the country right now because they perpetuate this idea that you got to give a little to keep what you got. It's not even give a little to get a little. It's keep giving a little, little to keep what's left. That's what they're promoting. And then they're making money off of it the whole time. So they perpetuate these bad ideas like universal background checks and conflating gun trafficking with private sales uh, and, and coming out against people who open carry in public like they did in Texas or, uh, you know, promoting red flag laws like Hickok 45 has been trying to do lately. Uh, it's just 
garbage. And these people like Joe Rogan are fed this garbage and then they get it on uh, the internet and then they go to their uh, army of thousands who assume that they're um, at tens of hundreds of thousands and say, well, he's pro-gun, so if he's saying this stuff's needed, I guess it's needed. That's how the poison fucking spreads. And that's why I fucking hate people like Hickok, Colin Noir, the NRA, because they are the source of the fucking poison. And the only way we're going to stop them is to cut them out and fucking get them out of there. You suck that shit out. You don't leave it in. Uh, and like I said, Joe Rogan, the things you said are disappointing to me. I would love to have an opportunity to educate you on the real meaning of the Second Amendment and the ridiculousness of a lot of the things you said, but that's not the place of a guy like me. Unfortunately, you get to talk to people like Colin Noir, Hickok, the NRA, Cox, LaPierre, etc. And as long as that keeps happening, you're going to keep being poisoned. And as long as you're keeping being poisoned, your audience is going to keep being poisoned. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. That's what's made me mad. The fucking poison inside the pro-gun movement. So if you want to talk about unity and we all got to stick together, it doesn't do any good to keep all your limbs together if at your core is fucking poison that you're allowing to stay there. We need to get rid of the poison in the second community because this stuff, this stuff like Joe Rogan did on his podcast today, that's not the problem. That's a symptom of the problem. The problem is the poison and the poison is the NRA, groups like the NRA and the people that sell their fucking message for the money and don't care about what happens. Thank you.